made him jump for the night, Morgan! I know, I know. A man, sir. <laughs> what does thou profess? What will stop with us? What art thou? A very honest hearted fellow, and as poor as the king. <laughs> Thou beest as poor for a subject as he is for a king, thou art poor enough. <laughs> <laughs> what wouldst thou? Uh, service. Who wouldst thou, sir? You. So thou know me, fellow? No, sir. But you have that in your countenance that I would fain call master. What's that? Authority. What services canst thou do? I can keep honest counsel, ride, run, mar a curious tale and tell it, <laughs> and deliver a plain message bluntly. That which ordinary men are fit for am I qualified in, and the best of me is diligence. How old not thou? Not so young, sir, to love a woman for singing, nor so old to dote on her for anything. <laughs> I have years on my back, 48. Follow me, thou shalt serve me. If I like thee no worse after dinner, I will not part from thee yet. Dinner! <laughs> Where's my name, my fool? Where's my daughter? So please you. What says the fellow? Call the clock pole back, my lord. Uh, where's my fool? I think the world's asleep. Why, Hannah, where, where, where's that mongrel? Sir, he says your daughter's not well. Oh, I came the slave not back to me. When Sir, I he answered me in the roundest manner. He would not. <laughs> would not? My lord, I know not what the matter is. But to my judgment, your highness is not entertained with the ceremonious affection as you were wont. Ah, yes, that's it. I beseech you, pardon me, my lord, if I be mistaken. My duty cannot remain silent when I think your highness wrong. Thou but rememberest me of mine own conception. I have perceived a most faint neglect of yet, which I have rather blamed as mine own jealous curiosity than as the very purpose of unkindness. I will uh, uh, think further on it. But where's my fool? I have not seen him this two days. Since my lady's going into France, sir, the fool hath much pined away. Oh, no more of that. I have noted it well. Uh, go you, uh, say to my daughter, I would speak with her. Go you. And call him my fool. Ah, ah, fellow, come you hither, sir. Come hither, sir. Who am I, sir? My lady's father. My lady's father, my lord's knave, you horse and dog, you slave, you cur! I'm none of these, my lord, I beseech your pardon. Do you bandy looks with me, you rascal? I'll not be strucken, my lord. A trip neither, you base football player. I thank thee, fellow, thou service me, and I love thee. Come, sir, arise, away. I'll teach you differences. Away! away. And you will measure your lover's length again, Terry, but away. Go to, have you wisdom? So! Oh, my friend, you may I thank thee. He is earnest of thy service. <laughs> Let me hire him too. Here's my coxcomb. Ah, my pretty name, oh, just so. Sarah, you were best take my coxcomb. Why, fool? Why, for taking one's part that's out of favour. Nay, and thou canst not smile as the wind sits, thou'll catch cold shortly. There, take my coxcomb. <laughs> Why, this fellow has banished Tuan's daughters and did the third a favour against his will. If thou follow him, thou must needs wear my coxcomb. How now, an uncle, would I had two coxcombs and two daughters? Why, my boy. If I gave them all my living, I'd keep my coxcombs myself. There's mine. Beg another of thy daughters. Yeah, take care, fellow, the whip. Truth, sir, dog, must to kennel. He must be whipped out when the Lady Bratch may stand by the fire and speak. Call <laughs> <and doll>, to <laughs> me! Sarah, I'll teach thee a speech. Mark it, Uncle. That lord that counseled thee to give away thy land, come place him here by me. Do thou for him stand. The sweet and bitter fool will presently appear. The one in motley here, the other found out there. 
Oh, call me fool, boy. With all thy other titles thou hast given away, that thou wast born with. This is not altogether fool, my lord. No, faith, lords and great men will not let me. If I had a monopoly out, they'd have part on. And ladies, too, they'll not let me have all fool to myself. They'll be snatching. Nuncle, give me an egg, and I'll give thee two crowns. What crowns do they be? Why, after I have cut the egg in the middle and eat up the meat, the two crowns of the egg. <laughs> When thou clovest thy crown in the middle and gavest away both parts, thou borest thine ass on thy back or the dirt. Thou hadst little wit in thy bald crown when they gave us thy golden one away. Then they for sudden joy did weep, and I for sorrow sung that such a king should play Bo Peep and go the fools among. <laughs> when must thou so full of songs, sirrah? <laughs> I have used it, uncle, ere since thou made thy daughters thy mothers, for then thou gavest them the rod and puttest down thine own breeches. <laughs> but if, uncle, keep a schoolmaster that can teach thy fool to lie, I would fain learn to lie. You lie, sirrah, we'll have you whipped. I marvel what kin thou and thy daughters are. They'll have me whipped for speaking true, thou'lt have me whipped for lying, and sometimes I'm whipped for holding my peace. <laughs> I'd rather be any kind of thing than a fool. Yet, it would not be thee, uncle. Thou hast paired thy wit on both sides, and left nothing to do. Here comes one of the pairings. Oh, now, daughter, what puts that frontlet on? Thou art too much of late to the frown. Oh, thou wast a pretty fellow, and thou hadst no need to care for her frowning. I am better than thou art now. I am a fool, but thou art nothing. Oh, yes, pursue. I'll hold my tongue. So your face bids me, though you say nothing. Not only, sir, this your all-licensed fool, but other of your insolent retinue do irely carp and quarrel, breaking forth in rank and not to be endured riots. Sir, I had thought by making this well known unto you to have found a safe redress. But now grow fearful by what yourself too late have spoken done, that you protect this course and put it on by your allowance. For you know, Uncle, the hedge sparrow fed the cuckoo so long that it had its head bit off by its young. So out went the candle, and we were left darkling. Are you our daughter? Come, sir. I would you would make use of your good wisdom and put away these dispositions which of late transport you from what you rightly are. Does any here know me? This is not Lear. Who is it that can tell me who I am? Lear's shadow. Your name, fair gentlewoman. This admiration, sir, is much in the savor of other your new pranks. I beseech you, understand my purposes aright. As you are old and reverend, should be wise. Here do you keep a hundred knights and squires, men so disordered, so deboshed and bold, that this our court, infected with their manners, shows like a rioter's inn. Epicurism and lust makes it more like a tavern or a brothel than a graced palace. The shame itself doth cry for instant remedy. Be then desired by her that else will take the thing she begs. A little to this quantity or train, and the remainder that shall still depend to be such men as may be sought your age, who know themselves and you. Darkness and devils, son of my horses! Call my train together, degenerate bastard, I not trouble thee. Yet have I left a daughter. You strike my people, and your disordered rabble make servants of their betters. Oh, the too late repents. Oh, you, sir, are you come? Is this your will, sir? Uh, speak, sir. Uh, okay. Sell my horses. Pray, sir, be patient. Detested. Kite, thou liest! My train are men of rarest parts that all particulars of duty know. Oh, most small fault, how ugly didst thou in Cordelia show, which drew from my heart all love and added to the gall. Oh, Lear, 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 beat at this gate that let thy folly in an idea judgment out. Go! Go, my people! <laughs>